so we uh, it becomes pretty cool. Yeah, and also a little bit of the packaging of the robot is, is by necessity as, as we um, have such a tremendous amount of uh, intelligence and, and integrated circuitry that has to be packaged uh, for the robot to do real work. Some of it is just a matter of having adequate adequate space to, to house the components, uh, but clearly a little bit of, uh, I'd say, a poetic license was taken as well to, uh, to make it look uh, a little bit you know, it's an attention, attention grabber for sure. But I'd say, think of the fun, form and function was the first and foremost uh, objective with the, the packaging of the robot. Okay, Bobby Blanc can answer the question. Third one. It's Bobby Block from your latest. I know if I understand correctly, it's not being unpacked immediately. It's going to be a while before it gets unpacked. So I was wondering if you could go through about when you're going to unpack it, what it's going to be, where it's going to be before then, and then what your rollout schedule for when he's actually <coughs> going to be doing work. Okay. As much as robot engineers, the first thing that as soon as it arrives, comfortable to work around. The first demonstration I'm going to show here gives you a sense of robots, the robot's range of motion and a little bit about its dexterity, and also a sense for its speed. We have a variety of overriding systems that are monitoring those sensors. And we also make sure that the force the robot's applying, oh, excuse me, that the robot doesn't only exerts as much force as it needs to perform the task at hand. So it's very easy for me to overpower the robot because it's really not exerting anything more than it needs to hold position or go through that trajectory. One of the very important things that makes it comfortable to work around. At any point in time, I can stop it. Or if it bumps me or I bump it, there's no issue. Now, dexterity. Dexterity is key. If we're going to be working with the same tools and interfaces to prove it. We have to have dexterity that's similar to a human hand. By, in this case, having a four-jointed thumb. Obviously, thumb is critical for a human's dexterity. Thumb with this, this number of joints and the full range of motion of the fingers gives us the ability to form a wide range of grasps. Dexterous grasps that use our three primary fingers and also tool and power grasps that use our full hand. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about and we're going to demonstrate the robot's ability to be able to. Um, be able to handle a heavy payload, in this case, 20 pounds. And one of the things I'm going to ask my uh, lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Parsons. <laughs> Adam, besides being uh, very good looking and uh, young and strong, he also, oh, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> he, he also uh, was one of the, the uh, mechanical designers on the team. So uh, we're going to show the robot actually being able to, to manipulate a fairly substantial weight, in this case 20 pounds. This is really the type of payload you have to have to be able to do various tasks. Adam's going to show you him also lifting 20 pounds, and one of the discussions earlier was the comparison between human endurance and robot endurance, uh, and Adam's going to show you the human endurance, and we'll see how he fares against the robot endurance. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pretty good so far. He's doing well. You can tell Adam's very fit. <laughs> and normally these types of motions you expect uh, uh, a human could also do. Now Adam has the capability of being able to do more specific weight than the robot, but then actually being able to hold on to the weight and have the endurance to be able to keep it held out in position is considerably different. Good, Adam. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> Adam, how are you enjoying your stand so, Go ahead. We'll, we'll let Adam off the hook. The robot, of course, doesn't get tired. Adam isn't tired either. <laughs> and again, what we did when we designed the robot is we wanted to be able to, to address as many different varieties of tasks, work tasks, as possible. So in this case, we have a, a what's called a space blanket. It's, very, uh, it's a floppy, irregular object. And we're going to use two hands, in this case, to um, be able to manipulate the object. We do have the machine vision working. You can see up on the screen and behind it, the robot's actually lifting the blanket up and carrying it. And look, it found inside it has an envelope. So in this case, without any kind of other programming, uh, we're actually going to go in and we lift the blanket up. Now the robot grabs the, the envelope inside. <coughs> and then it presents it for us to be able to uh, take. So, and so I grab the envelope, and the robot senses that, and then releases the envelope and goes back to its, uh, to its position. It has an EVA panel, things that are outside the space station. It has a couple of other devices too, like straps and things that are used for stowage on the port station. Other, the robot's going to perform a task now. The first one on the power panel, one of the first things we'll be doing after we complete the checkout of the space station. And this includes some additional vision work, similar to what Marty just demonstrated with the envelope. First thing it's going to do, like all good robots have to do, it's got to turn on the power. But it has to remove the cover switch so you don't accidentally turn off the power on the station. The power's on, the light's there. Now it's going to go, of course, it's a very neat robot, it has to go cover the panel's power <laughs> switch so no one accidentally turns it off while it's doing its test. Now it's going to go press one of the buttons and it will know whether or not it's done its job properly by a light coming on, on the button. And guess what? I missed this time. But it's got some intelligence. It's going to go back and try it again. And move around a little bit so it can get itself centered with the button. Second time is a charm. An important capability that humans have when they deal with each other is nonverbal communication. Uh, you've seen some of the force control, the robot bumping into me. You've seen our vision. Um, when I go up to shake somebody's hand, I don't tell them I'm shaking your hand. I put out my hand out and I give them a little pump to know that it's time to shake my hand. Well, the robot likes to do that also. If I come over here and its four sensors are running right now and it feels this motion, shaking hands, and it turns to having fish taken along with <laughs> Now, when other humans come up to do this, the robot always looks at the camera, but people forget all the time. They're staring at this robot going, my, what a great machine. They forget to have their picture taken. So uh, I would like to give a couple of members of the audience an opportunity to shake hands with the robot. You can feel it's got a nice, comfortable, but firm handshake. Uh, one or two, if you select, all right. This moves quickest. Uh, <laughs> look at the camera. I'll <laughs> it. And I'll have, I'll, I'll go as high as the first. And then we'll have an opportunity for more of my questions with Andrew. And Marty and I can join. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't know that this is a nonverbal communication technique based on force. So you're going to shake my hand. 
Don't be afraid. Up and down a little. And down. Remember to look at the camera. And people like to do that too, but there was no point. Maybe more appropriate person to look at um, or just kind of his kind of like broader picture, maybe more specific. So what I'm really interested in is sort of like the idea that uh, four robots are going to be used in this environment. This was sensing my force. <laughs> 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 